I am the Maven of the Eventide, and welcome to Vampire Reviews. Minions, bring me the Bloodstone, for I thirst. Oh. Right. I have no minions. Gotta get on that. you know that the first American vampire movie to be shot on location in Romania, which is where Transylvania is, was a schlocky bee horror movie? That's right. It's time to talk about subspecies. In the 1980s, camp horror visionary Charles Band had a film production company called Full Moon that was infamous for pumping out super low-budget direct-to-video movies. And many of them involved little tiny monster creatures of one variety or another that the company then went on to merchandise and sell as figurines and toys. It's not like they were making tons of money off this, but they did all right. It was all about quantity over quality. And they went overboard with the sequels for most of their films, in lieu of coming up with fresh ideas. Not that they never had new ideas, obviously, but sometimes the ideas didn't pan out. One of Charles Band's failed ideas involved these little monster guys, the subspecies. So he reworked them to include in a vampire movie idea and hired a couple guys to write the script and Ted Nicolau to direct. Shipped them off to Romania in 1990, and the rest is history. And there is a lot of history. Director Ted Nicolau got so into this project that he completely took it over, developed his own head cannons, single-handedly wrote five sequels, four of which he actually made into films, and it became Full Moon's most enduring franchise. People love this series, especially the first movie. But it's bad, you guys. It's real bad. I mean, for a terribly campy B-horror movie, the actors are pretty decent, but the production only had so much to work with, and blood bless them, they tried. Oh, man. So why do people love it so much? And not in a, like, so bad it's good way, but actually unironically. Well, because of the vampire. There are actually five vampires in this movie, but I am, of course, talking about our boy Radu, the Dark Lord of Drool. Radu is a vampire of vampires, so over the top, and yet still so horrifying. He is iconic. I'm talking in like a Freddy or Jason way, not mainstream, sure, but no vampire quite like Radu had ever come before. Prior to 1991, we had plenty of Nosferatu-esque, gruesome, totally evil vampires, sure. But most of them were animalistic or driven by pure bloodlust or more primitive desires. Even the classic Dracula's motivations were pretty simplistic when you think about it. But Radu combines the grotesquerie with some interestingly complex character depth. Yeah, he's got some daddy issues in this movie. And then in the sequels, some serious mommy issues, as well as a touch of romance. He is one emotionally messed up vampire baby. Very tragic. And yet, he does not dwell on his torment like more introspective vampire cliches, and that makes him quite the villain. And thanks to the 1000% committed performance of classically trained character actor Anders Hove, a new vampire icon was born. And then died. And then was reborn. And then died again. And again. And again. Yeah, it finally sticks at the end of the fifth movie. Or does it? It does. But does it really? Radu Vladislas was returned to dust. But the sequels are a discussion for another night. Tonight, we focus on the film that launched the infamous saga, Subspecies. Right. What about those little monster guys? What do they have to do with vampires? 
Well, they're born out of Radu's blood at the beginning of the movie when he pops his fingertips off, and they help him escape his unloving father's trap and otherwise generally do his bidding. I guess they're supposed to be a subspecies of vampire of a sort, though we never get to see them do anything vampire-y. And even though Radu and the other vampires bleed again later in the movie, no more of them are born from that blood. The puppets are cute, but they were shot on blue screen and composited into still frames, and the results are laughably terrible looking. The film originally had guys in suits running around on giant-sized duplicates of the set pieces that they wasted a lot of time and money building, but the director decided he didn't like how it turned out, so he replaced them with puppets in stop motion. They are so completely pointless to the film that he should have just cut them out entirely. You would not even notice if they were gone. But then how would Full Moon sell models and action figure toys? The important things. But despite how bad the subspecies are, I do like the title. Because vampires in general are something of a subspecies of humans. But unlike his brother and father, who seem like pretty average vampires, Radu is a perverted version of the vampire, because his mother was some mysterious sorceress. So if he's already a subspecies of a vampire, then his finger monster babies are a subspecies of a subspecies of a subspecies. And what does subspecies even mean? Well. In taxonomical terms, it's benign, it just means a way a species is divided into smaller groups. But the way it's used in the film gives more the connotation of the slur subhuman. It implies something lesser, something that's looked down upon or derided. And as much as vampires are hated and feared by humans, Radu himself is hated and feared by other vampires, even, especially, his own family, hence his daddy issues, and why Radu gets revenge and kills his father in the film's first scene. We have this domino effect of bad treatment propagating more bad treatment the further along the subspecies branches it goes. And this is directly what makes Radu into a villain who does so many terrible things. Because Radu was born different and hideous, his father treated him like a monster, and so a monster he became. It reminds me of that Tupac quote, the hate you give little infants fucks everyone. You start off hating and treating people, yes vampires are people, like lesser from their most formative years, they'll retaliate and come back and kill you, as well as perpetuate that cycle. I don't think Radu's finger babies can look forward to much of a nurturing upbringing. He certainly doesn't treat his full-sized vampire fledglings very well either. These three girls are folklore students studying vampire legends in Transylvania, so of course they wind up getting entangled in real vampire shenanigans. Lucky bitches. What's happening is the old vampire king is dying. He's centuries old, but I guess not totally immortal. He's chosen to pass on his legacy to his non-evil pretty boy son, Stefan, Radu's half-brother. This legacy includes his crumbling ruin of a castle, as well as this magical bloodstone, which never runs out of blood. So a vampire can live off it without ever harming humans. Also, it supposedly grants special powers or something, but that's never actually explained. It certainly doesn't give Vampire Daddy enough power to stop Radu. The problem is that Radu feels entitled to this legacy. He is the firstborn son, and he's been treated like crap by his father his whole life, and damn it, he deserves it. This sense of entitlement, fostered out of a combination of the privilege that power provides and bad parenting, drives all of Radu's motivations. He's not evil for the sake of evil, he genuinely believes he is owed. He has suffered for too long, and it's finally his time to have something. He kills his father and also wants his brother to suffer. The only reason Radu even takes an interest in the three girls is because Stefan cares about them. Because his brother wants them, Radu must take them for himself. Remember you such a sweet pleasure to desecrate her before yourself rise your side. The girls thus are reduced to objects to possess, 
and boobs to grope, and Radu does not see them as real people. And once they become vampires, they are something of a subspecies of Radu's subspecies. So again, the bad treatment cycle is perpetuated. In the sequels, he kind of ends up falling in love with one of them. I guess she grows on him? But we get none of that in the first movie. The two girls Radu turns completely lose their human personalities. They become willing servants and hurt their friend. So here, the transformation into vampire represents the loss of love and empathy. And love and empathy are what Radu's been denied his whole life. He may think he wants power and a legacy, but those things are really just pathetic attempts to fill the hole that lack of love and acceptance has left in his heart. And the whole vampiric concept of privileged entitlement in general is a much more apt vampire parallel than many we get. Radu takes the bloodstone just because he thinks he's owed it. Its purpose is to provide a source of food so vampires don't ever have to harm humans, but he's still running around biting whoever he wants. He revels in the bloodstone essentially going to waste just to be petty. But the interesting thing this movie does is that Radu's tragic angle is not all that the vampire means. It's just one side of the coin. This is illustrated when the third girl, Michelle, faces the inevitability of becoming a vampire. After Radu bites her, she asks Stefan, who is a vampire who respects and cherishes humanity, to be the one to finish changing her. I don't want to be like him, Stefan. Make me like you. So we see there are two ways to be a vampire, the healthy way and the unhealthy way. Heck, there are probably many ways to be a vampire. Just like there are many ways to be human. The difference is that with the subspecies of vampires, once they're turned, they do not have a choice. The takeaway for humans watching this is to appreciate and examine our privilege of choice. And if you've been as messed up by outside forces as Radu, Maybe gain a little introspection and consider seeking help instead of indulging in a sense of entitlement. You cannot replace love with power, my friends. And as revolting as Droolmeister Radu is, his emotional trauma makes him truly sympathetic. He's got a whole lot of layers going on. A whole lot more backstory than Dracula. Speaking of Dracula, fun fact, Radu was named after the original Vlad the Impaler's brother, known as Radu the Beautiful. Ha <laughs> ironic, cause he's ugly. His brother Stefan here seems to be filling that beautiful role with his soap opera good looks. We learn Stefan had a human mother, so he loves humanity. And he's just generally the nicest vampire ever. Even though he doesn't have the bloodstone, he never seems to have to bite anyone, which is pretty convenient. We see him tempted to bite Michelle a couple times, but refraining doesn't seem that hard. Does he even need blood to survive? I don't want to hate on him just because he's a brooding, tormented, pretty boy vampire and ugh, those aren't real vampires, cause come on, come on. But. The movie so conveniently avoids having any consequences to him being a vampire other than being Radu's brother that might make him even remotely unromantic or unattractive to the heroine that I just... What's even the point? But yeah, Stefan's not the vampire the adoring fans remember from this movie, and Radu immediately kills him at the start of the sequel, so Ted Nicolau clearly knew what the people wanted. More Radu and more Romania. He went back there to shoot all four sequels, and as bad as these movies are, it is pretty cool to see these real, authentic locations, historical ruins, and haunting scenery. He also does some pretty fun stuff with light and shadow, like all these Nosferatu homages. If you can suspend your disbelief about night scenes shot during the day and giant spotlights in the actual night shots, Subspecies provides some pretty creepy atmosphere with an air of authenticity that no vampire film had quite managed before. Except for the actual subspecies. I am the Maven of the Eventide, and I'm currently taking tiny minion applications. Please form a line to the left.
Thank you for watching my videos. Please remember to subscribe and hit the alert bell so you actually get alerts when I upload new videos. I upload two a month. Every time I upload a video, someone says, you're back. And I'm like, I never left. I'm always here. It's just the YouTube algorithm not letting you see my videos. So subscribe, follow me on Twitter. I always tweet when I post a new video and I will see you in the night.